All right, Holly. Let's take a look at this uh, Seattle team. This is a rough loss for Carolina, three straight. But Seattle, they started out 0-2, and everybody was saying, again, we talked about it on the pregame show, <clears> rebuild. <throat> they're far from rebuilding right now. They're in the playoff hunt. Yeah, and, and this was a really, really difficult game. And, and Christian McCaffrey, we talked about it. I, we thought he'd be good. He's special. And, and I think it's a perfect fit in this offense, over 200 yards in total offense. He's special. But I, I, I go back to the same point. This, this Seattle offense, they ran the ball for 156 today, and it paid off in the second half of the game. As they mentioned, the pass rush slowed down. Russell made some big throws in the second half, setting up the, the game-winning field goal. So I, I think it's, again, Carolina came into this game the sixth seed. They lose three in a row now. They were the, they were the sixth seed, and they've got New Orleans twice in the last three games. Well, you know, we were saying in a pregame show when, when that, that screen pass, who would you pick? You pick Russell or you pick Cam? This is where, as, as your head coach, for some reason, Russell has this thing about him that is a calming presence in the middle of a storm on the road against Carolina, back and forth um, um, fight here. And he's just putting balls on the money. I mean, this guy, just amazing. The way he moves around the pocket, he's not the tallest guy. He's not the um, uh, prototypical-looking quarterback, but he has a great arm. He's a team leader, and he knows how to get the ball down the field when you need it the most. Yeah, and that run game, coming into it, people are talking about how they've been getting that run game going. Mike Solari, uh, the offensive line coach, done great for them. But then to come out and put up numbers like that, yeah. passing, yeah. caught me off guard. Kudos to, <clears throat> to Russell Wilson, did well today. The 156 on the ground, as they mentioned, really kind of, it was like body blows throughout mm -hmm. the first half. And then the second half, they come out, the pass rush slows down after you've been playing the run. They run for 156. I didn't see that in Carolina. Like Carolina, I'm going to tell you, Carolina came out in this football game game and we sat here and going McCaffrey Cam Newton what was he 12 14 for 14, 14 amazing for 14 the first half. how they were playing and and now they're losing football games that they shouldn't be losing mm -hmm. yeah right. you got to think well that defense has got to step it up because they're playing too good a football I think offensively to be losing games now three in a row yep if they had put the formula together they'd say they want to hold Seattle to under 80 yards rushing which they did they had 220 yards themselves Outgained them by 100 and still lost. I mean, this was, they did everything right Unbelievable. on paper. Unbelievable. But instead, Seattle gets the win. And as we take a look at the playoff picture right now, Seattle moves ahead, obviously due to the head-to-head -head battle of the Carolina Panthers. As we speak, the Vikings who play later tonight and Washington own the two wild card spots, but there's still a month left to go. Yeah, and Baltimore's now won a couple straight. They are six and five, and in that sixth and final playoff spot right now, seem to be playing with a little bit different energy. We thought that about the New York Giants, Michael, the way they played the last two weeks and the first half today, but <laughs> maybe not. You know, if people at home can see what happens here during this game, <laughs> they will understand all these little jabs at me, obviously. Bradshaw. <laughs> Terry, TB, Gaffy. Gaffy, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> but, you know, you watch each other, I, I'm just baffled. I'm baffled because the first half was totally different from the second half, especially when it came to Saquon Barkley. And, and also, you know, defensively, this was a turning point, trying to force a ball in the to triple coverage back there, gets picked off, and from then on, the Giants just went backwards offensively. And their, their best star, I got to say, Michael Bennett turned it up, Chris Long with the big sack right there, Howie. But, but Saquon Barkley was the star of the first half. Second half, he rarely touched the ball. You didn't know he was even on the team. I don't know if it was the injury or what, but they didn't get the ball in his hands enough. He touched it four times in the second half, and I don't think that's what this offense needs to do. Everything needs to go through him, obviously. <clears throat> For the Eagles, I, I, I think what's been missing was what we, the sequence of plays we saw in the fourth quarter. You know, the, last year they were an opportunistic team. They took chances. That fourth down play, which extended the drive right at the edge of field goal range and then running the clock out and kicking the field goal. Who knows? You know, I mean, do I think it's a turnaround? Probably not. At this point, I'm not totally sold, but it certainly puts you in the right direction and, and gets them off the snide and gets them feeling good about, one, they took the opportunity, they took the chance, and it ended up paying they off. Won, how yeah. they, they won, how They won. Winning is yeah. infectious. Yep. It's contagious. Mm -hmm. It's a good deodorant for, yeah. for everything. We've, oh. we've talked about it a couple times the last couple of weeks. <laughs> the way Washington, especially hey, with well. the loss of Alex Smith, and uh, the Dallas Cowboys, Cowboys have been playing. Dallas has won three in a row, but neither one of those teams scare you. You think if Philadelphia can Dallas get their New thing going? Thursday night. Yeah, Philadelphia is not out of this thing just yet, are they? No. I, I tell you right now, I don't care what these teams do. 
when they run up against the Saints or the Rams, they're going to lose anyway. Right. <laughs> that, that's kind of my point. This, that's this just debate. making me feel better about losing that Giants game today, you know everybody. What, now, now, I'm, I'm going to gather your better. thought. I'm going to tell you what. We stood on the sidelines last year, all of us, and watched the Rams get yeah. handled by the Eagles. All right? Mm-hmm. You can't tell me, and I, I, I said on the pregame show, Eagles aren't going to make the playoffs. But I'm going to tell you, it doesn't take much for a talented team when they can get a win without all those defensive to backs up. play to wake up. Wake up a sleeping giant. There's a reason they won the Super Bowl last year. It's a pretty doggone good right football now, team. Right now, Dallas is in first place at 6-5. and five. Washington's the number six seed at 6-5. and five, And the Eagles are at 5-6. and six. And Dallas gets New Orleans. You know, it, it's, and like you said, Alex Smith is out. This division is a fascinating division, if, if, if not disappointing. And still everyone has four games left to play. You mentioned the NFC playoff picture. Let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture because the way Lamar Jackson is playing, all of a sudden the Baltimore Ravens are one of those teams that people were writing off. They've won back-to-back games. And Tony, again today, Jackson, Jackson in his second start, had 71 yards rushing, 170-plus passing, but he's getting it done on the ground. He is getting it done, and after I saw him play last week when he had 27 carries, uh, I said to myself, like, what are they doing? I mean, because this guy, uh, you're going to get hurt. You just can't do that for too long, but he came back this week. They had a great game plan for him. Anytime you can run the ball like he does, and when he takes off, he looks like a running back. This guy is flat out fast, and he's and he can make plays, and to go along, we saw uh, the defensive player, Terrell Suggs. Their defense is good. I mean, this team right now, they're going to rally around this young kid, and I think they're going to make a playoff run here. I think this is, this is a team nobody wants to play against because you don't know what to expect with that young guy. They are trying to save John Harbaugh's job, according to some reports. Mm-hmm. But the way they're playing right now, it may not matter. It looks like they are a playoff team the way they played the last couple of weeks. All right, as we get ready to wrap up the day here, I get some final thoughts from you guys. Start with you, Tony. I, I'm not, Russell Wilson, I think uh, the way he went into Carolina and played, you know, traveling West Coast to East Coast, we all know that's not easy to do. And for them to go in there, uh, Carolina lost two in a row. To get that victory on their home field, they are back in that playoff hunt. Thick and thin, the running game wasn't going, and Russell Wilson picked up 339 yards passing, two touchdowns, no picks. Great day for him. I, I think Cleveland Browns. I mean, the team that we don't talk That's about. That's what I was going to say. You know, like, yeah, well, the great mind yeah, think about yeah, TV. Yeah. And, but Cleveland Brown, Baker Mayfield, threw the eight different receivers, four touchdowns today. Woke up last week and said, I woke up feeling dangerous. Oh. Well, obviously, he woke up this morning feeling dangerous. And it's amazing when the head coach leaves, the offensive coordinator leaves, all of a sudden this kid just, you know, pops. And he just has this thing about it. It's an infectious way of, of just being, I think, the positivity that this team is feeding off of. Good I agree. I, you know, we've got New Orleans on Thursday night versus Dallas. You know, it's a kind of a, we, we've acted as it's a foregone conclusion that New Orleans is going to have home field advantage. I think the Rams' road to the end of the season is a little bit easier than New Orleans. I agree. They're at Dallas. Yeah. They're at Tampa Bay. They're at Carolina, and they finish with Pittsburgh at, in, in New Orleans and Carolina in New Orleans. So it's going to be interesting down the road. So who, yeah, and who, won the, who won today? Who won the day? Nobody. I'm looking forward to Thursday night. Okay. Yeah. That's, a, that's a promo. Forget about the day. Yeah. Let's move on to <laughs> Thursday night. You know what, Look hey, at Mike, you ready for this? I'm going to give you another one. I'm going to say tonight, Cousins, Rogers, Green Bay, Minnesota. We are in playoff mode now. So every game is big, especially contenders. And the, I know the Vikings and I know, they, I know Green Bay. Didn't they go to a, a tie ball tie. game? Yeah. Tie. Those two teams play to a tie, yep. so it'll be fun tonight. A lot of division games down the road. You yeah. know, and the other thing the is, I think guy. we all reminded, don't write off the two teams that were in the Super Bowl last year. New England, if they get everybody back healthy, they can get rolling, and Philadelphia is still alive, at least, in the NFC playoff hunt. So you One say right now is dominated by the Saints. <laughs> they will take on the Cowboys. Thursday night football. That's the next time we've got action for you here on Fox. Yep, yep. 